Whatever the thing is, your trauma grids, your personal stories, your heartbreaks, your grief, your, you know, all the stuff, the, the stuff that, um, that haunts you. In yogic science, we say there's 13 ghosts that haunt you in your subconscious mind. And you could call those memories, you could call those traumas, you could call those, but they're, let's just say paranormal, because they, they have almost a animation of their own. Now it's actually not true, they're not animated themselves, but because of the momentum of the reactivity and the, the unconscious and subconscious reactivity, they become animated in some way. So it's like a little poltergeisty, but like you're the one who's like behind the, you're, you're the Snoopy do, um, what's the gonna know, what's, uh, well, Scooby, you're the Scooby Doo, you know, if I would have gotten away with it, like it's you, you know, um, but uh, those are your, your 13 ghosts of the subconscious mind. So we have reactivity upon reactivity upon reactivity upon reactivity. And, and then this is what people call life. And then they wonder why, you know, things aren't exactly going the way that they would have preferred or um, they can't get out of a, a certain type of addiction or, you know, they can't um, uh, move themselves from a different uh, perspective, which you could call a psychological perspective could be called depression. A psychological perspective, and you could call it a lot of different things, and, and there's a lot of ways of looking at this, and uh, ultimately you have to find a way to perceive your incarnation that will give you energy, and it's a personal journey. Now, the wonderful thing about community and sophisticated community and community that has some ability to have the spectrum of, of flexibility around your own self-importance, around your own kind of, you know, how married are you to being right and whatever moments and your self-importance and your self-righteousness and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and then also you could put the degree of how much uh, you uh, kind of have a humor about it. I taught something this morning where um, it was called, it was something humor, I'll have to pull it up. It was a really good term. It was like, you know, some, some kind of term about the humor that you have, like gallows humor is a term that they use, but kind of a little humor about your predicament here on planet Earth. I mean, it's kind of funny. Um, and so like the degree, the percentage in which you can have a little laugh at yourself and you, the, the, that's the Ricky Gervais. I mean, you know, I like that guy. Uh, and he has a he his first kind of show, um, which was on I think the BBC, which was called "Are You Having a Laugh?" Um, I, I don't know if anybody watched that, but isn't that what it was called? Something like that, having a laugh. Um, but you know, you got to have a laugh at yourself. And and <clears throat> I'm telling you that um, this kind of uh, third, fourth, fifth dimensional toggle of perspective and awareness, and we could say it in so many different ways, but we'll use this because, you know, it's on the poster, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta keep the theme going. It's a theme party, you know? Um, so so the, those dimensional awarenesses, um, they, they'll start to give you a, a, a way to uh, enjoy your life more. Let me just put it simply. Enjoy your life more. Enjoy yourself. One of the things that I would love, like, how about if I never see you again? I'd be sad, but if I never see you again, if something happened to you in the, the practices tonight, on this very activated day, it's a very magical day, something happened to you where some part of you revealed itself underneath all of the reactions reactions to your environment, reactions to what happened to you, reactions to whatever, regret, whatever these things are. Something revealed itself that was of pure essence. That's a huge, that would be my, that's my new moon intention for our work today. That, that even just a little revealment underneath all of the reactions, um, that would be a very fifth dimensional 5D uh, femme experience, and that's kind of my, that's my intention. 
But with these, these uh, kind of advanced artificial intelligences that are mapping every reaction you have, back to Tom Cruise and the deep fake, um, thought I'd forget about that. Uh, they, they actually, this guy was saying that they can kind of create um, like a tone of voice that's like your children and da da da, da. I mean just all sorts of odd things to see where, uh, and you know, let's not go to the most nefarious um, paranoid aspect of it even though I'd like to. Uh, um, let's just go to, they're trying to sell you something. What, whoever it is, you know? They're just trying to tell you something. Let's just go there, right? So they're mapping kind of your emotional reactivity to uh, how you're kind of maneuvering through your augmented reality, which is, I mean, when don't you have the phone in your hand? I mean, some of you may be a little less involved in that, but for the most part, I mean, when don't you have the phone in your hand? I mean, you take it to the bathroom. Remember when you used to go to the bathroom without the phone? Those were the days. Now it's just like, I can't go to the bathroom without the phone. I mean, I cannot have like a, um, I just can't. Um, so, but, so, the, you know, there's a, a mapping of all of that and it's become very advanced. So then you have to ask yourself, if that has become very advanced, then you have to become even more advanced at mapping your own, what we call in the yogic science, parapsychology. You cannot be surprised at what gets a rise, what gets a rise out of you, because that's how you know all this political stuff happened on Facebook. I mean, nobody's really paying any attention to this anymore. But um, all of the uh, what was that that you know um, kind of uh, firm that was involved in this kind of thank you Cambridge Analytics. So that was kind of our first like, oh, wait a second, in the same household, they were like testing to see, you know, one person in the household didn't like ballet and the other person, you know, liked Trump and the other person, you know, li didn't like Hillary but was still gonna be, you know, is still a Democrat, whatever. They were doing all this kind of stuff and then they were using that very advanced analytics to, you know, kind of uh, do what was necessary to get the votes and all this kind of stuff. So it's become very advanced. So then the question is, you have to come become more advanced than the very advanced artificial intelligence uh, tracking your own emotional reactivity, tracking your own thought patterns, tracking what you respond to and why, tracking what actually kind of opens something in you and, and, and feels like it, it integral or right action or turns you on as it were. One of the things that we're gonna do this year in Events Grace is we're gonna track what we call the lunar centers. Um, we're really, and Dave is doing some powerful work around this. But uh, because the, these lunar centers are uh, these kind of very powerful centers that every woman has in her body that change every two and a half days that completely change your perspective, your mood, your energy, your um, uh, kind of your introvert, you know, if you feel like being around people, if you don't feel like being, I mean, this is, this is profound. And basically, for thousands of years, women have been persecuted for uh, the secret, not taught to them, knowledge of the power of their own cyclical intelligence. And this is beyond your menstruation or view menstruation. There's, there's different layers of your cyclical intelligence and this is one that is very important um, because when a woman has the power of this cyclical intelligence and she understands it and she can use, she's mapped it out just like some other things that you have to kind of map out um, in your life, when she has this power, she's unexploitable both to herself she cannot exploit herself, and she will not let anyone else exploit her. Imagine a world like that. I can imagine a world like that. That's a powerful world. And that's not a world that means that like, we hate other people who aren't in a woman's body or that it's anybody's fault. It's not a world where we're in reaction to what has happened before this. It's a world that we have enough power to create the world that we want to happen now. 
and, and actually in integrity do it um, uh, from a place that is of essence. And I mean, that's, I think this is a very exciting time because there seems to be a little bit of the veil thinner around creating reality that is meaningful to ourselves and meaningful to our families and our communities and, and the like and, and this earth that needs us to wake up really fast. <laughs> it's an emergency. Um, <laughs> You know, it's a, it, and so we, 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 you know, each one of you and I want to thank you for taking this time this afternoon to do this work because you, there's a million things you could be doing. You could be, you know, it's hot girl summer. <laughs> you could be doing so many things. I was on the plane to New York and these girls were like, it's hot girl summer. Um, and they're like, we're, you know, they were like getting ready to jump on whatever they wanted to jump on. <laughs> Um, I was like, this is awesome, good for you. Um, but so, so, you know, there, there's a lot of things you could be doing and um, this is a, a, a very powerful time this day to magnify a, a healing frequency, to magnify um, a unique intentional frequency of, of what is the world that you're creating. Um, and that's your own personal world and that's the collective world. All right, so that's kind of what we're gonna be working with. Um, and if you're new to Kundalini Yoga, you know, we do some weird stuff. I was, so, somebody interviewed me yesterday and they were like, you know, how, why'd you get into Kundalini Yoga? And I was like, well, it was the first 20 seconds I was waving my arms around, you know, in some weird fucking way. And then my Kundalini shot up and I was like, okay, this is fun, um, I'm in. Uh, and so that's kind of what happened to me. So if you're new to Kundalini Yoga, um, the, the, you know, forget about the Kundalini rising. It, it, you, we're gonna do some weird stuff. And part of the weird stuff we're doing is there you have to reprogram your computer in order to actually have change. You can't just, you know, you can't, this is the difference between a mantra and an affirmation. An affirmation is powerful. And it, it you know, I, as much as you want to do, you know, write your, like, you know, I'm a ha bad, hot bitch, and, you know, <laughs> put it on your mirror, you know. Um, whatever you're kind of, you, you know, do your thing. But the mantra is, it's repatterning and reprogramming the coding of the human uh, mind body computer. And the whole earth is computerized now in ways that if you're not, you know, we have a couple artificial intelligence type, you know, programmers and engineers in our, in our community, and they always come up to me after I talk about this, and they're like, thank you, because people don't understand what's actually going on. Um, you know, the people who are in that industry understand what's happening, um, and the rest of us are just kind of like, I don't know, giving all of our personal information to uh, Zuckerberg and, you know, um, naked pictures of us and stuff. Um, that guy must have a real, you know, kind of a file. Uh, but so, you know, we just, we don't really kind of get what's happening. But the, the whole computerization of planet Earth and your computer, if you, can, if you can have the power to reprogram it at your own will and, and you know, work with it on a deeper level, then you have the power to change. You have the power to be resilient. resilient. You have the power to endure. You have the power to um, maybe see something from a different perspective and realize, okay, I, I actually need to kind of change my behavior or um, uh, do something different and then you don't find yourself five minutes later doing the same thing that you didn't want to do. I mean, how many, how many of us have done that? It's like, I'm going to not eat wheat today. It's like, drive to the coffee shop, you're like croissant in the mouth, like two minutes later. Um, or whatever the thing is, you know, all of the different ways. And the, the reason being is that you have to go into the computer reprogramming. So the, the computer body mind, so the mantra does that. That's why we use the mantras. So we're going to tune in with this kind of sound frequency. It's a code, and it goes into your computer. And you don't have to, you know, you don't, you don't. It doesn't matter if you like it or not, um, or if it kind of aesthetically pleases you. That's not really the point. Um, although this new major white sun song, that's very pleasing. Um, uh, so, you know, this is a pop song and it has a certain frequency, you know, compare that to another pop song. It's a very different frequency. Um, so, and, and we're just scratching the surface of what we understand about sound science. Um, we're just scratching the surface of it. So, um, we'll use this, a kind of mantra. You don't need to understand what it, what it means. 
you just, you know, try to pronounce it right. You don't need, you know, do your best. It's intention. Um, and it, it's going to go in in an adaptogenic way and do some kind of reprogramming of some from uh, some faulty files and some trash that's sitting around in there that doesn't need to be there that's making a heaviness. And that heaviness you could call is anxiety. That heaviness, that, that kind of trash that hasn't been emptied, I mean, it's literally just like this. I'm telling you exactly how it is. The trash that has not been emptied on your mainframe, um, what do they call this, the home screen? Or desktop. So the trash that is full on your desktop in the, the, the computer here, that is creating a heaviness in your system, just like it creates a heaviness on the, the speed of the computer. It's exactly the same, almost.